worship him in this place. Give him praise and honor and glory. Come on, he is worthy. He is worthy. Come on, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be lifted up. He's worthy to be honored. He's worthy to be magnified. He's worthy to be referenced. He's worthy, God. He's worthy. Come on, we're talking about the Lamb of God. We're talking about the Lamb of God, the one that died on the cross. Come on, the one that calls you to have eternal life. He's worthy. Come on, think about what he's done for you. Think about how he saved you. Think about how he's healed your body. Come on, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb of God. We know this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Anybody excited yeah. about being in the house of worship on today? Anybody excited that he woke you up this morning and started you on your way? You may not have felt like coming, but there was a push in your spirit that you knew when you showed up in the house of the Lord, there was a blessing that was going to meet you here. So I don't know about you, but I came with the expectating spirit. I came anticipating that God was going to move in my life, that he was going to do something great, that he was going to do something great, that he was going to do something great. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus on today. And while we're in the presence of the Lord, you may have your seats. Amen. Amen. We bless God for the leadership of this house. Come on, somebody. Pastor and First Lady Eaton, you ought to be excited that God has given you great leaders. Leaders that care about you. The leaders that pray for you. Leaders that lift you up. Come on, somebody. We thank God that they have a word that God has birthed in them for our situation. So we bless God for your leadership. And thank God for the work that you're doing in this area. Amen. And then we thank God for those of you who have come out on today and here to hear what God has to say. My friend, Evangelist, uh, Evangelist Coleman, we go back, we go back. Amen. And, and though we don't talk often, every time we see each other, there's a spirit and there's a spirit of God that rests in her that just transfers to me. So I thank God for her wisdom. And whenever I see her, it's always something that lights up in me because um, I didn't know her when she came to the first retreat, but we have become friends and we thank God for that. My son is here with me on today. Wave Donovan. Amen. Amen. So we bless God. We, we do come with a word on today from the Lord. And the one thing I love about God is this. Even though he has sent me on assignment um, to, to, to birth something out of First Lady, God said you're going to reap the benefits. Come on, somebody. You, you know, it's always good when, when, when it might not been specifically called for you, but when you can sit at the feet of Jesus and glean from him, and get something out of what God is speaking on today. Amen. Amen. I do honor my bishop and my elder uh, for releasing me to come on today. Bishop Kim Brown and Elder Valerie Brown, the leadership over at the Mount. Amen. And we thank God for them and the work that they're doing. You know, you know I came to let you know on today that, that God is doing something great in this house. Did, did you hear what I said? Somebody should have gotten excited, especially if you're connected to this house. Come on. I, 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 don't, I don't want you to sit on what God has for you today. He says, despise not the small beginnings. Come on, somebody. You, you know, when I started in 2000 with the women's retreat, there were only 22 women that came. Just, just 22. And we've gotten up to 100. Come on, somebody. You know, because God called it out. God sanctioned it. God sealed it. You know, God established it. So whenever God establishes something, you can't lose. Praise God. And so we thank God uh, that, that, that pastor has heard from the Lord to honor and recognize our first lady on today and the work that she is doing in this house and the work that she will continue to do. Amen. So there is a word from the Lord from Romans 5 verses 1 through 5. Amen. Romans 5 verses 1 through 5. And I'm going to ask that you stand as we 
read the word in honor of the word on today, Romans 5, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope and hope maketh not ashamed because of the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us I'm gonna stop there look at your neighbor and say neighbor I'm serving in my suffering come on somebody T tell somebody else, I'm serving, I'm serving in my suffering. Father, we thank you for the word that's going to be deposited in us on today. God, let it rise up in us that when we leave this place on today, we will have, have more stamina and more perseverance to serve you, even in what we're going through, so that you can get the glory in the name of Jesus it is so. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It, it, it's always amazing uh, to me that, that we are sometimes a people who want something, but rarely want to give something in return. Come on, somebody. If we go back and, and take an assessment, we can always identify times that that we wanted something but we may not have wanted to give up much to get it uh, we may say we want a new car but we don't want to pay that much for the car come on somebody uh, we want this promotion but we don't want to put in the additional hours to get it uh, we want this job but we don't want to go back to school to get the education for it we we want a man or we want a woman but we don't want to give a commitment to be in the relationship I'm talking to somebody on today we want the anointing but we don't want the suffering that is attached to it we want to reign with him but we don't want to suffer come on somebody we, we got to understand that if we have been on assignment for the Lord and we have been sent to serve we are going to go through some stuff come on somebody but I came to let you know on today that you need to celebrate in the suffering that you're going through because God is going to get the glory out of what you're in well what are you saying preacher the Bible declares that if we're going to reign with him, we're going to suffer. We're going to suffer persecution. We're going to suffer betrayal. We're going to suffer rejection. We're going to suffer loneliness. We're going to suffer trials and tribulation. We're going to suffer some sickness and some distress. But the Bible says, as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yes, tell your neighbor we're going to suffer. While we're serving, we're going to suffer through some things, and I hate to say it, especially in the church. Oh, come on, sir. Can I be honest and transparent? See, that's why I wrote this book called Church Hurt, because I've gone through some stuff with some church people. Now, now listen, the, the, the building didn't hurt me. It was the folk inside the building. What are you saying, preacher? What I'm saying is this. It does not matter what the suffering. Jesus has already paid the price. Oh, come on, somebody. It's in the word. You've been bought with the price. But don't allow it to separate you from the love of Christ. Tell your neighbor, suffering goes with the assignment. See, Paul tells us, first lady, that we have peace with God. And that we now stand in grace as we stand in the grace of glory. So when we're standing in the grace of glory, we don't stand idly. We praise him through our suffering. We honor him through our suffering. We give great praise in the hope of the glory of God. 
That's the goal of justification. Tell your neighbor, I've been justified. It doesn't matter what you know about me. I've been justified. It doesn't matter what you heard about me. I've been justified. It doesn't matter whether you like me or not. She is the first lady. Oh, come on, somebody. It doesn't matter whether I qualify to you or not. Jesus has already justified me, called me out, and has given me the grace to serve in a capacity that he will get the glory. I've been qualified, I've been justified, and now I've been identified, oh come on somebody, as a survivor in Christ Jesus. See, Jesus said he is defending me, he is upholding me, and as a matter of fact, he has justified me to be in the position that I'm in. And you can't do anything about it. Oh, come on, somebody. See, you got to understand that my assignment is my assignment. I have been anointed to do what God has called me to do. You can't go through what the first lady has gone through and come out of it. You might not make it because God has already anointed her and appointed her and assigned her and announced who she is. You got to understand that when you start celebrating somebody else's assignment, maybe God will give you one. You, did you hear what I said? See, women, women, I just want to, I'm, I'm going to give you this nugget for free. When I learn how to celebrate other folks' uh, 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 things that God gave them, that's when, the God, when God opened the windows of heaven and poured me out blessings that I didn't have room enough to receive. See, I, I'm not jealous of first lady because that's not my calling that's not my assignment that's not what God called me to do you you got to stop being a hater of somebody that that God has assigned and start looking for God to give you an assignment come on somebody I want to help somebody in here see all of us have a purpose all of us have an assignment but when God says in John 15 and 16 I have chosen you you have not chosen me to go and bring forth fruit you got to understand that my name is on that scripture so you have to know that God has something for you but it won't manifest until you get your will out the way and let his will and his way take precedence and supersede what you're thinking why do I serve in my suffering because I'm a chosen witness for the Lord. Oh, come on, somebody. See, God has a purpose for every obstacle, frustration, and pain, affliction, and adversity that we have encountered. Uh, he says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord has delivered them out of them all. So you got to understand that, that there is a word in 1 Peter that declares, beloved, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trials that come to try you as though some strange thing happened. If you are a bona fide born believer in God and you say I'm anointed and appointed by him, there are some things that are going to come up against you. Because you're not working for you, you're working for the Lord. You got to understand that there are some people that are going to come up against you because you're not working for you, you're working for the Lord. So don't think it's strange when God gives you an assignment and somebody is jealous of you. There are some naysayers, there are some Sadducees, there are some Pharisees that want to pluck your last nerve so you can throw in the towel. But you say, devil, I got something for you. I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. I am on assignment for God. You can celebrate. You can serve because he has called you to be a witness in the body of Christ. But every now and then, sometimes while you're waiting, it may cause you to be angry and upset because you don't see the manifestation of God's purpose in a timely manner. You got to understand that, that passing off the tribulation will not help you get through the process. Oh, come on, somebody. 
but you got to go through the process. You got to trust the process and know that you're going to gain the anointing by going through the process. See, you know why First Lady is anointed? Because she's going through the pain. You know why First Lady is anointed? Because she's going through the process. She had to go through the process in order to be a witness for the Lord. Oh, come on, somebody. You got to know on today that God is calling you to be a witness in the body of Christ for what you're going through. She would not be able to stand with a smile on her face if it had not been for the Lord on her side. But God allowed her to survive. But God has brought her up and out. But God has allowed her to stand even in the midst of a storm and say, I will serve the Lord. So he says, I've called you to be a witness, but you have to let patience have her perfect work. If you would just allow the Lord to deal with you according to the assignment he has predestined for your life. See, you don't have to make up anything to do because God says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. What is he saying, preacher? He said, I had already tailor made what I called you to do before you were formed. He knew your purpose before you were formed. He sanctified you for the purpose. That's why I'm trying to figure out why are some people trying to connect to folk that don't even have anything to do with their assignment? Why are you trying to connect with people that don't have anything to do with your assignment? He says, listen, I sanctified you and I ordained you a prophet to the nation. Let me break it down. He didn't say you were a prophet of the Lamb and Lion Worship Center. Oh, come on, somebody. We got more folk that hear from God than they hear from their own mamas. But you got to understand that God is saying you can prophesy to your own situation. You can speak to your own situation. You can let the devil know what God has already spoken in your spirit and it will manifest. So you got to stop trying to connect with people who are not a part of your circle. Because there's some folk in your circle that have a Judas and a Peter spirit. Okay, I'm going to move on. I'm, I'm going to move on. Did you hear what I said? There are some people in your circle that have a betraying spirit and a spirit that will sell you out for 30 pieces of silver. Oh, come on, somebody. You ought to clap on that. You ought, you ought to shout on that because I'm confirming what God has already spoken in somebody's spirit. There are some people in your circle that are contaminating what God has called you to do. And you might as well, you ought to just stop and say, I got to kick you out. Oh, come on, somebody. I got to get you out of my circle because I'm trying to get to the next level. I got to stop calling you because I'm trying to get to the next level. When I see your number on my cell phone somebody say clip, clip, I'm cutting you off because first lady you can't take everybody with you. you your, your heart wants to. You, you, your Lord have mercy. Your heart wants to. It's the same situation every month and you've already given them godly advice. God says it's time for them to fly on their own. Come on, somebody. See, you got to stop worrying yourself about why they're not doing what the word is telling them to do. And see, see, you out there today, you, you ought to be thanking God that when she sees your number, she still answers. Because you didn't do what she told you to do the last time. Oh, come on, somebody. The heart of a first lady will serve even in your suffering. Come on, somebody. We'll pray you out of your suffering. The heart of a first lady. So I know we're going to bless it today with some tangible stuff. Oh, come on, somebody. Just thought I'd throw that in. You, you have to. You have to be a witness in the body of Christ. This is why God has elevated her to this place. Because she is still serving in her suffering. You know when first lady's not here, pastor, we're first lady. Because see, y'all thinking, oh, what's going on? We need some folk to pray for her. Come on. When the Bible says, think it not strange 
See, you're not going through for naught. The, the, the B portion of that script, he says, but rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering when his glory shall be revealed. You may be glad with exceeding joy. And what God is doing is he is preparing you for your assignment. But when you fall into diverse temptations, when you fall in, you still have to do what? Count it all joy that you're suffering for the cause of Christ. So you got to know that I'm a witness through the suffering and I will still trust him. I'm, I'm a witness when the enemy comes in like a flood, the standard on the inside of me will be lifted up. I'm a witness that no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Even though they may form, I'm going to still be a witness in the midst of what I'm going through. Divorce will not prosper. Bankruptcy will not prosper. Foreclosure will not prosper. Lies and rumors about me will not prosper. Cancel will not prosper. Discouragement will not prosper. Bitter and anger will not prosper. What you say and know about me will not prosper. I will still be a witness in the body of Christ because I know that I have survived much because of the Lord. Not only is, is she a witness, but she's been chosen to worship. Come on. I've been chosen to be a witness, but I've been chosen to worship. Paul says in verse 3, he says, and not only, that is not only that we celebrate in our suffering and serve in our suffering, but, but exalt and praise in the hope of glory of God, but we also exalt in our tribulations. Oh, my God. That's hard for some of us because we got a woe is me spirit. Every time something happens, we got to pick up the phone. I know you're getting a word here because the man's got a word in him. I know now, now if you will come on, on Wednesday night, your, your fuel might not go down as early. Come on, somebody. If you show up on Sunday for, for church service and stop calling other folks and saying, hey, uh, what did pastor talk about today? Come here for yourself. Work out your own soul salvation. Come on, somebody. Paul is telling us, this not as a spectator, but as a participator. He is a fellow sufferer. Are there any fellow sufferers in the house today? Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but some of y'all look like you have been through something, but you don't look like what you've been through. Oh, come on, somebody. You hear what I'm saying? You don't look like what you've been through, but because God picked you up and turned you around and, and put an extra pep in your feet because the me tried to take you out you can stand and give God a praise right now because you are a survivor because your devil didn't take you down the devil didn't take you out when you wanted to give up you didn't give up so you want to just take a moment and have a praise break and say when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me my soul cries out Just look at your neighbor and say, you just don't know. Oh, my God. If you knew my story. If you knew my story. If you knew my story. You would understand my praise. Don't judge me because I don't look like you. Don't judge me because I just came out. But I'm going to give God a praise anyhow. I'm going to be like David. I'm going to bless the Lord at all times his praise his praise his praise shall continually be in my mouth oh magnify the lord with me let us exalt his name do i have any praises in the house with the real praises please stand with the real praises lift up their hands with the real praises open their mouth with the real praises shout for joy with the real praises let the Lord know how good he's been to you. Every now and then, you ought to just stop and have a praise break. Oh, come on. Somebody. Oh, come on, somebody. Every now and then, you ought to just have a praise break. Go ahead and praise him. Look, look, look 
at your neighbor and say, I don't know how you can just sit there and be still. I said I won't go tell nobody. tell nobody but I can't keep it to myself when God has blessed you and I'm not talking about some big blessing I'm talking about he just woke you up this morning in your right mind you didn't put on clothes that shouldn't go together oh come on somebody you got on two shoes you made it to the house of worship oh come on somebody you can put your hands together. You see what I'm saying? You didn't need anybody to feed you this morning. When you're serving and you're suffering, he doesn't just choose you to be a witness, but he chooses you to worship him. See, see, when you can praise God in your afflictions, when you can worship him going through your adversities, when you can worship him in your anguish, when you can worship him in spirit and in truth, but the situation is still there. Oh, come on, somebody. Then that's when God said, I can trust you with anything. He said, first lady, you, you've gone through some stuff, but you didn't give up. You got frustrated, but you didn't throw in the towel. You were mad and angry and upset. Now, I, now, now I, I'm just saying this, but y'all have never seen it. But guess what? She said, I've still been chosen to be a witness. I've still been chosen to worship. Because this is not about me. This is all about him. And see, every now and then, you got to know that what God is doing is he's stirring up something on the inside of you so that he can pull it out and it can be a blessing to lamb and lion worship center. Come on, somebody. So, so it, it, in this season, what God is saying is, while you're serving in your suffering, trust the process. Listen, God has spoken some things over your life, and you haven't seen the manifestation of them yet. But he said, trust the process. There were some interruptions that came in your life that you did not expect. Oh, my God. But he said, trust the process. See, this ministry that we're in on today was birthed out of suffering because they trusted the process. Nine years ago, four couples, oh Lord, some people will say, oh, this ain't no marriage co conference. What in the world? Nine years ago, when she came home and said, Lord, husband, I got to tell you something. I went to this retreat. See, if I had not had that retreat, if I had gotten so upset, angry, frustrated, and thrown in the towel, and nine in retreat nine would not have taken place. Now, I'm not saying this wouldn't have happened, but God would have used it to come through somebody else. This is how important your assignment has to be. You hear what I'm saying? That God established, called out, and birthed Lamb and lion worship center just for you to just say yeah just for me because see some of the stuff that y'all be sharing with the first lady other first ladies won't listen to that's why she has been personally assigned to this house he said i've chosen you to be a witness I've chosen you to worship. Even in the midst of all the things that you're going through, he said, you still got to be first lady. You, 
you still got to be on the worship team. You still have to be help me. Oh, come on, somebody, to this man. You still have to be mother to these two girls. But in the midst of that, he said, I'm going to give you the strength to be able to carry it all. Come on, somebody. But there's a crown laid up in heaven because of her obedience and not giving up on the promise that was predestined in her justification. Oh, come on, somebody. He said, I've, I've chosen you to be a witness. I've chosen you to worship, but I've also chosen you to wait. One of the most difficult things that we can do is wait. But the Bible gives us an assurance that when we wait, we glory in tribulation. Knowing that tribulations work with patience, and patience experience and experience hope the sooner you take your hands off of getting out of it fast come on somebody quick and in a hurry then God is going to move I'm talking to somebody in this house on today see your intellect has helped you get out of some stuff but God said this experience will listen he said only I can get you out of what you're going through now only I can take you to the next level now. I know you a fixer, but God said you can't fix this. I know you got some good counsel, but God said you can't counsel your way through this. He said you got to back up and let them see my experience. Come on, somebody. Because see, some of us are riding on the experience and the anointing of our leaders. But God said, I send a word today that you will no longer handicap them. Paul said it best, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am to be content. See, when you don't see it working out the way that you want it to work out, he said, be content. When he doesn't move as fast as you want him to move, he said, be content. He said, when you try to throw your hands up, he said, put them down, be content. Because you will not back away from what God has already spoken. You can't make it go faster because when we try to make it go faster, we mess it up. Come on, somebody. In my weight, I won't murmur. In my weight, I will not complain. But I will be of good courage. And I will wait on the Lord. And I will see what God has to say to me and for me. I'm going to be just like Jesus when the Spirit of God called me in the wilderness. Come on, somebody. See, the devil is not doing everything. We got to stop blaming stuff on the devil. When God, Pastor, may I go down? When, when, listen, listen to me. When God is ready to use you in your assignment, he is going to call you to a place called wilderness. It's in the word of God. Luke 4 and 1, he says, and being led by the spirit of God into the wilderness. Catch this. He was being led by the spirit of God. But the Bible said that he was full of the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on, somebody. I, I want to listen. She's only standing in, in, in this assignment because she's full of the Holy Ghost. Some of y'all full of some stuff, but it ain't the Holy Ghost. That's why you can't go to where God wants you to go. You got to change your attitude. You got to change your demeanor. You got to change your disposition. Why don't you even change your frown into a smile? When God is ready to use you as a witness and as a worshiper, come on somebody, and he chooses you to wait, he may lead you to a place called wilderness and you will have to serve him in your suffering and know that the enemy is waiting to tempt you because Jesus has sent him there. Oh, come on somebody. I need to get some help in here. You got to understand that God has already set you up for a breakthrough he's already set you up for a miracle he's already set you up for your assignment because that's when Jesus went out to begin his assignment and if we're going to be more like him then there's a process that we have to go through why am I in the wilderness to serve and worship because God is saying I want to use you 
Me, God? Yes, you. Me, God? Yes, you. My background is tarnished, but I want to use you. I've done these things. I want to use you. Come on, somebody. He says, all you have to do is make yourself available to me. And I'll cause you to be a witness. I'll cause you to be a worshiper. I'll cause you to wait on me and be of good courage. Wait, I said, on the Lord. But you got to make yourself available. And even in the midst of what you're going through, he said, I just still need you to serve me even in the affliction. Serve me when you don't have money. Serve me when you feel like all else has failed. Serve me and I will empower you. But you have to have the mind to want to serve. Not when the church blows up. Come on, somebody. Not when we get a bigger building. But you got to serve God right where you are. So that he can trust you. You got to start hanging out with folk that are like-minded. Oh, come on, somebody. You hear what I said? You got to hang out with folk that have the spirit of Christ in them and on them. And there is an anointing on, your, on their lives so that you can connect. You, 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 the Bible tells us, come ye from among them. Separate yourself from the unclean thing. That's another reason some of our things have not come into manifestation because we hanging on to unclean stuff. Come on, somebody. We hanging out with folk that we should not hang out with. But in 2016, I made up in my mind, Coleman, that I'm going to start hanging out with folk that are going to be able to lift me up when I go down. That's not going to judge me where I am. That's going to give me words of encouragement. That's going to give me a confidence that I can go on and see what the end is going to be and then when I get to the end I will not fear even though I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death because God is with me he's already anointed my head with oil and what's going to come out of it is he going to prepare a table for me come on down first lady in the presence of my enemies see some folk didn't think she was going to make it some folk think she wasn't first lady material some folk think that she was not going to walk in her call but today God said come on somebody all you got to do is trust me weeping may endure for a night but joy has come in the morning he said i will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemy see what god is saying is i'm inviting everybody that came against you Oh, somebody ought to shout on that. I I'm going to invite everybody that talked about you. I'm going to invite everybody that looked through rocks at you and said you weren't going to make it and amount up to anything. But God said, on this day, I honor you, woman of God. Oh, come on, somebody. On this day, I trust you, woman of God. On this day, I will not turn my back on you, woman of God. Whatever you ask for the Lord in his name, he said, I shall give it. Oh, my God. Somebody should have gotten excited about that. See, when you connect to the woman of God, you have victory because she's leadership. And if God has called you to this house, then you ought to want to bless who God has called you to. See, God is empowering all of us to be, to do, to say, and to go. But you can't go in front of her. Ah, oh, come on, somebody. You, you know, I, 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 I could go through the story of Esther and Vashti, but, but, but I won't do that. But all I got to say is when Vashti moved, God put her in place. Because it was hers from the beginning. Oh, come on, that's a whole nother story. That's, that's a whole nother message. It's a whole nother message. So, so, so you, can't, you can't try to take her place. Because God said, I've ordained her for it. You don't need to make suggestions to the pastor. Because you're not his help me. He's already put Esther in place. And see, the thing that I love about it is this. Because... She is serving in her suffering. God said, I have already discovered her. 
And so that simply means that he's presented her to the king. He has already positioned her for the reward from the king. Oh, come on, somebody. And so as you line up behind her, the blessing is coming down. Oh. Somebody going to catch this in a minute. As you line up behind Esther, she's going to go to the king for you. Oh, come on, somebody. And somebody's about to catch this in a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get this in, some, in the spirit of some people. Now, this is not ordinary church. This is non-traditional right here. So somebody's going to be okay to catch this in a minute. I don't know about you, but I'm at the altar. My first lady is at the altar. And she's saying that I'm going to go before the king when it's not even time. The king is going to give me an audience for you. But I got to line up behind the queen. Oh, come on, somebody. Somebody else just caught what I was saying because they know that their blessing is connected to the first lady. I'm, I'm just saying now. See, what I'm saying is this. The more I stand behind my first lady, oh, my God, the anointing behind her uh, is going to get up on me. Oh, my God. And, 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 and whatever she touches, whatever she speaks, because he's already empowered her to be. He's already empowered her to do. He's already empowered her to say. He's already empowered her to go. And when the first lady starts moving, come on somebody. When the first lady starts moving, I'm going to move with her. When she goes before the king for me, I'm going to get my blessing. Come on somebody. Turn around first lady. I'm going to follow my first lady because my blessing is connected to her. Somebody else is going to catch it in a minute. My blessing, my blessing. Is connected to my first lady. My blessing 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 is connected. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. chosen to witness. I've been chosen to worship. I've been chosen to wait. And if I got to wait with my first lady, I'm going to do it. If I got to worship with my first lady, I'm going to do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. Praise God. You may be seated for just a moment in the presence. We thank God for such a tremendous word of God and allowing the Lord to use Dr. Boyd to come and minister to our hearts. Can we bless the Lord for her today? Amen, amen. I know the church has something they're going to do for First Lady we can just give that to her on the side. The anointing is here. And we, what, what was heartfelt was this. Amen. Amen. We thank God. It, Dr. Boyd just confirmed some things on so many levels. Amen. On so many levels. I told you we need to expand our Justice League. You need to examine your Justice League. There's some people you need to get out of your league. Oh, God. I told you that. Amen. And then in the, if you were there with me in morning prayer this morning. I declared a thousand blessing. From the, I declared a thousand fold blessing. Because I just believe, y'all. I just believe, and this is part, this is for Dr. Boyd too. I just believe the last quarter shall be the greatest quarter. October, November, December shall be the greatest. You went through the first half of the year, but the end of the year shall be greater than the first of the year. I just believe it. And it's already started. They saw it yesterday. God said they saw it yesterday. First lady, let me know. They looked at our, our fleet. They looked at the, the yard sale and we bought only one parking place. One, one parking place. Parking space. They said, y'all got too much stuff. I'm just going to give you another one for free. Walmart don't give you nothing free. <laughs> Walmart don't give you nothing free. God's favor. Yesterday was the beginning of the last quarter. 
And God started favor then. And God is blessing. So I thank God for Dr. Boyd accepting the invitation to come and speak on this First Lady's Day because God spoke to this house. Y'all, we're in transition. The shift is on. The shift is on. If you can't see it, I'm praying like Elijah prayed. Lord, open up their eyes because the shift is on. And we're about to explode in here. So you need to get ready for what God's going to do. Amen. Amen. Y'all can sit down. I'll, I'll preach Wednesday or Thursday or whatever night I'm supposed to be back. I, we'll do it then. But God has spoken to our hearts, and I thank God. I told y'all only, I don't bring everybody in. Y'all know me. I don't bring everybody in. I'm particular. You know, brother, can I come? No, God ain't spoke to me yet. But I, when God, I, I asked Evangelist Coleman, go ask Dr. Boyd to come. Because she was supposed to come earlier, but my wife. My wife, my wife, but you know, that was first, it, but it was just planned for her to be here now. Amen. Amen. It was just God for her to be here now. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for everything that he's done and he's going to do. If all hearts, minds are clear, nothing else. We ask Dr. Board to come and dismiss us. And don't forget, we, and she's going to bless the taste of Hispanic heritage that we have next door. Don't leave. Fellowship. It's free. Yeah. I ain't nobody got happy that it's free. It's, I can charge you. If you ain't happy, I can charge you. Okay, I'm just, it's free. <laughs> Go to the white room and be a blessing. Let's just get a taste of his man's heritage. Dr. Boyd is coming at this time. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, we're not going to be long. We're just going to go ahead and give the, the, the benediction. L listen, when I started, I said I'm serving in my suffering. But now I can say I'm celebrating in my suffering. Amen? Amen. 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 So celebrate. Celebrate. Be content right where you are. The manifestation is going to come. I want to hear the testimonies for the seeds that you planted. You hear what I'm saying? I want, I want to hear. See, I, I'm already claiming and dancing on my return. When, when, you, when you invest in something good, there's a great return. Oh, come on, somebody. Did you hear me? When you invest in something good, there's a great return. And so you gotta, you're got you going to get a return on what you invested on today. So we bless God on today. Father, we just give you praise, honor, and glory. We don't take any of it for ourselves because you spoke a word in us today that even though we might be going through some suffering, we can still serve, but better yet, celebrate in what you're doing. Now, God, may the food that has been prepared, let it be a blessing and a nourishment to our souls. Bless those who prepared it, God. Let the fellowship be one of excitement for what you're doing in this house and how we're not just recognizing one ethnicity, but God, you're rec we're recognizing all that are a part of this house. Bless pastor, bless first lady, and bless everyone who will connect to this lamb and lion worship center. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding rest, rule, and abide in each one of us now and forevermore. Let the people of God say amen, 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 amen. and amen. Come on, hug somebody and tell them, celebrate in your suffering.